Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking through some plant organs and tissues. Now this is really meant of an introduction to the topic of photosynthesis done in the IGCC specification for biology. And what the specification requires you to know is just a few of the plant organs and the name of some of the plant tissues that you find. So we're just going to give a little overview to that. So let's talk about plant organs to begin with. Let's start at the bottom. So whilst they're slightly hidden from view, our first plant organ is down here. And we're talking about the roots. So the roots are classed as a plant organ. An organ, by definition, because it's important to establish what we mean by cell, tissue, organ, organ system from the get-go, because organ and tissues are two different things. So when we refer to an organ, what we're referring to ultimately is a group of different tissues working together to do a job. Now that's how we define an organ. A tissue is a group of similar cells together. So tissues are groups of similar cells, but groups of different tissues actually work together to form what's called an organ. So we're going to lay out our big organs to begin with, and then we'll talk about tissues more specifically. So roots are our first organ, and the role of the roots, ultimately, as you might be able to guess, is for the absorption of water and minerals, water by osmosis and minerals taken up via active transport. So we've got roots there. Let's put another one in place if we go higher up. So we've got another particular organ here, and that's the stem. Now, if you look at the stem in cross-section, you'll see xylem and phloem. So xylem and phloem form part of the vascular bundle or the veins, and they're designed to carry water up the plant and sugars, so food if you like, up and down the plant in both directions. And that's the job of the stem, to allow movement of water and sugars throughout the plant as required. Let's label another organ that we have in this plant, and we have the leaves. So we can label one just at the bottom here. So let's put a leaf in place. Now, as we know, the job of the leaf is to attract or to absorb sunlight, basically. So when we use sunlight, get what's called photoexcitation of chlorophyll molecules that take in that sunlight and it's used in the process of photosynthesis for the production of glucose sugar ultimately. So that's the role of the leaf, this large plant organ and in separate videos I've talked about the structure of a leaf and the different components of it from the upper epidermal cells, the palisade, mesophyll, spongy mesophyll, the guard cells, the mater, the waxy cuticle. So the leaf is quite a large structure in itself, so it might be worth watching that particular video to understand what the cross-sectional structure of the leaf actually is. But there we've got the third organ to mention. So we've got the roots, the stem, the leaf. And the final one to include here would be the flower. The flower is classed as, well, technically an organ system. So it's worth just mentioning because the flower is actually classed as a structure with multiple organs in it. So it's actually known as an organ system because all of the parts of the flower we can class as small sort of individual organs. So like the stamen, for example, the which is the anthrum filament, the stigma, the petals, all these small parts of a flower go together to make up an organ system. So you just have to be aware, especially for this specification, of a few plant organs and the ones we've got before. The flower that contains, well, it's classed as an organ system, so you can name a few parts of the flower, the stem, the leaf, and the roots. But now we're going to go a little bit deeper and look at the actual tissues that we find. So let's start with epidermal tissue. So I'm going to number these and we'll do these in blue. So the first one that we're going to mention is the epidermal tissue. Now, epidermal tissue is protective. It covers the root, it covers the stem, and it covers the leaf, or leaves, rather. So we can draw an arrow to there, to there, and to here. So we've got epidermal tissue. It's protective. Epi means sort of outside, so we're talking about an outer layer of cells, if you like. In another video on root hair cells, I've talked about ep 
epidermal cells and root hairs being extensions of those epidermal cells, if you like, to increase the external surface area of the root. So we've got epidermal tissue there. Now let's consider the xylem and the phloem. So these in the leaf. So let's put number two. And we're talking about xylem and phloem. Now these together run like veins, as we call them, and they form part of what's called the vascular bundle. So I'm just going to make a note of that word here. So these together form the vascular bundle. And there's a number of videos on Mr. Out Explains about xylem and phloem. The structure, how they function, the adaptations, etc. So we've got xylem and phloem there, our second main tissue to speak about. Now the phloem tissue, if we take phloem first, the phloem carries food. It's like after f sound. The phloem carries food, even though it's spelled with a P and an H. Now the phloem tissue is made of living cells that carry food and sugars around the plant. So I'll just make a little side note. So the phloem ultimately is carrying sugars and it's made of, as I've said, living cells. Now I do go more in depth on a separate video about xylem and phloem, but we'll make a note just for completeness sake here. The xylem tissue, however, is made of dead cells that form hollow tubes from the root up through the stem to the leaves, and they carry water and minerals throughout the plant. So they're going from the root all the way up the stem and to the leaves. So the xylem make a note they are for carrying water and they are made of dead cells so this xylem tissue has dead cells within it together we call that the vascular bundle and the third tissue type that's important to be aware of is mesophyll tissue so let's put that over here so we've got what's called mesophyll tissue. Now the mesophyll tissue we can really branch into two. We can talk about palisade but we can also talk about what's called spongy. So palisade and spongy mesophyll. Now as I said it would be worth uh, watching the video on the cross-sectional diagram of the leaf just so that you're aware of where these types of cells are found. The palisade cells are particularly important. They're found in the upper surface of the leaf. So just beneath the upper epidermal cells which are basically a single transparent, transparent layer of cells that allow sunlight to pass through to get to these palisade cells. They contain chloroplasts, so a high number of chloroplasts, to absorb the sunlight for photosynthesis. So when we think photosynthesis, we're talking really about these particular cells, these palisade or palisade mesophyll cells is the proper name you can refer to them. Same with spongy mesophyll cells, but together they form what's called mesophyll tissue. So the tissue, you've got two types of cells, palisade and spongy, and the palisade are the ones that have the vast number of chloroplasts to absorb sunlight for photosynthesis. So there we have a little bit about plant organs and plant tissues. So our big organs, the flower, technically classed organ system, the leaf, stem and roots, and then we've got specific tissue to mention, so the epidermal tissue, the xylem and phloem tissue, which together form the vascular bundle, and the mesophyll tissue made of the spongy and palisade cells. Okay, hope all that helps.